Hey y'all, Data Guy here, back from my hiatus. And today, I'm here to talk to you about a new airflow provider that launched while I was away. Um, and that is the Ray IO airflow provider, which if you don't know what a Ray is, I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is, how it's useful, how you can use it alongside airflow to really effortlessly scale your ML and AI workloads. So Ray is an open source framework for scaling Python applications. Uh, but when I say Python applications, I really mean things like ML and AI, um, where you need to run a Python script across many different clusters or of compute because trying to run it on a single cluster, that data set's either too large or the computations you're doing are too complex to run in a realistic amount of time on that single compute. And so how Ray works is by using a distributed framework to enable easy parallelization of your tasks. So you can take your Python code and scale it from a single machine to multiple machines or nodes without needing to actually just work out the distribution logic yourself for distributing all that compute. Um, and then Ray also provides really simple APIs for managing distributed processes like tasks um, and actors. So tasks are lightweight functions that are executed in parallel, so that's that parallel compute. And then actors are stateful objects, so things that are maintaining you know, kind of a persistent history around how that model training is going. Um, and then it has really good integrations with ML and AI libraries as well. So RayTune, RayServe, RayLib, um, and then also has really good fault tolerance. But really why Ray is useful for ML and AI workloads is that scalability it offers. So because ML workloads typically are gonna involve large data sets, really heavy computations, Ray allows those to be really efficiently distributed across many nodes and speed up those processes. Um, and also because it's Python native, it is already able to integrate seamlessly with popular ML libraries like TensorFlow, like PyTorch, like Scikit-Learn. Um, and that's going to allow you to build distributed applications using tools you're already familiar with. Um, and then also ease of use, Ray just completely abstracts the complexity of your distributed computing. So you just write your code without really needing to figure out the networking or parallel programming kind of optimization, uh, Ray does that under the hood. And so you have a bunch of different leading companies doing that today. But what I wanna show you is how to pair that alongside Airflow to who, you know, use Airflow as your ML ops engine and then pass the heavy computation down to Ray for actually you know, running all those operations. Because a lot of times there's a lot of processes that happen before or after where you're actually doing the computation or doing all that calculation in Ray. And trying to do them with Ray can be pretty inefficient because Ray is not designed to do those more inefficient tasks. So pairing it with Airflow, where not only now you get a better, you know, kind of retries, you get better, uh, you know, abilities to process those models over the long term, have historical knowledge of all the different pipeline runs. You can run hundreds of pipelines at scale. Um, so Airflow provides a way to scale Ray pipelines. Um, and then Ray provides the ability to scale the compute use to power each of those pipelines when needed. Um, so that's really what I'm gonna show you today. So without further ado, I'm gonna kick it over to VS Code and uh, show you how to get set up. So first thing we're gonna do is create a fresh new Airflow environment. So here, we're going to just go into CD, desktop, Airflow repos, and then CD into LS to Provider, awesome. Actually, no, I'm gonna make a new one. Um, so we're gonna make a new directory. So Ray test, because that's actually just provider code. Um, so Ray test repo, and then we're gonna do a CD into there. And then we are going to run astro dev init, and this is just going to spin up a local Airflow directory and a Docker image, and then I open this. So desktop repos, there we go. And so here, what we're gonna do is start setting up our Ray environment. Sorry, not our Ray environment, our Airflow environment, and we're gonna set up Ray inside of it. Um, so here, what we'll do is just go into our requirements.txt file, and the only thing we need to do to actually install Ray is just install the Astro Provider Ray package under the requirements.txt. So if you're using pip to install a package in your environment, just pip install Astro Provider Ray. It's effectively what's dropping some of this requirements.txt does. And then what we'll do is go to create our first DAG. So the first DAG I wanna to create to just kind of show you guys one of the use cases of this, of Astro and of Airflow and Ray together 
um, is using the Ray Task Decorator for monitoring a job lifecycle. So just using a Task Decorator, run a Python task in Ray rather than a Python operator. So what we'll do here is do uh, call this Ray Task Lifecycle dot pi, and then what we'll do is start building our DAG. So here, just bringing in date time path. Let me just copy that one second. So here, just bringing in Airflow decorators and our Ray provider that we just brought in. Um, and then what we're gonna do, uh, after we've got a Ray provider in, is set a few different connection details. And I'll show you how to set up a Ray connection as well. Um, but here, just gonna reference the Ray connection ID. So Raycon, Ray spec is where you're saving your Ray YAML file. Um, and what this Ray spec file is referencing, and this is just a file you'll have on your local machine or wherever you're running your Ray uh, environment where here you're going to define hey this is what my ray cluster is going to look like so here you have audit you know, enabling auto scaling load balancer type of computer you're going to use the ports that are going to be available the worker group specs so just all the details for the compute environment that you actually want to be running your ray environment in um, and so that's the first thing there and then the second thing we brought in was the ray scripts so here under ray scripts these are actually just the scripts you're going to be using and running on that Ray uh, compute cluster. So you could pass these in at runtime if you wanted to um, and, you know, save the, hey, race, and then build it within the script, like within the Airflow DAG. But best practice is to have everything separated and, you know, in its own uh, file. So that way you can also reuse it if you want to run this Ray process for multiple different DAGs. Um, and so here you have just the Ray uh, script here. So in this case, just generating a bunch of random numbers. This is just kind of a test example I wanted to make for you. Uh, but it does actually work. So if you want to take this and I'll drop the DAG code and everything down in the description, if you want to test this out yourself, uh, you can. And this will just simulate kind of some ML AI style computation there. Um, so then you have the uh, cluster specs. You have the actual script you're going to run. The task config, this is just kind of putting it all together into one JSON document. And then what you'll do next is define your Ray Taskflow DAG. So here, Ray Taskflow example. And then what we'll do down here is just have a first task generate data. So, you know, let's say I'm pulling some data from an API. Then what I would do is then say, hey, take this data and put it into my Ray Task with the Ray Task config, uh, process that data. And then you can see here, Ray Remote. Um, so Ray task, give it the um, process data with those packages. And then what's going to happen under the hood here is it's going to take this and actually run it, run that script that we gave it in an environment that has an empty install that imports array, runs Ray remote jobs, um, and then it's runs the whole job, generates it, the response. So it generates, you know, whatever, whatever the result of that script was, um, and then runs that model and returns the predicted you know, mean of this population, right? So this is kind of a silly example, but you can kind of see, you know, in process, this removes the need to run this on an Airflow worker, removes the need to really figure out any of the additional setup of, you know, where am I gonna run this? Um, and I like to contrast this to something like SageMaker, which is a lot harder to set up and do here. This really is, you know, just saying, hey, take your Python script, configure a Ray cluster, either, you know, on your local machine or wherever you're gonna run it, um, and then, boom, have it all set up. So this is the first kind of arrangement here of how to use Ray and Astronomer, but I also want to show you how to use the uh, setup and delete operators too. Um, so if you've used setup, teardown operators, really great way to work with resources that need to be tightly controlled that are really expensive, um, which something like Ray is. You know, it's gonna be expensive for running all this compute. And so the setup and teardown operators in Airflow allow you to have tasks that say, hey, and I have videos on this too, where no matter what happens after the setup task runs, um, when this DAG, when, if everything fails in between, this teardown task is always gonna run and always delete the resources that were being used in those intermediary tasks, so in this case, Ray. So that's the next one I wanna show you, which is using Ray with setup teardown tasks. So Ray setup teardown.py, and then here, we'll start building our second DAG. So this isn't gonna be super different from the first. The only thing that's gonna change is just, I'm using actual specific Ray uh, operators here instead of just the Ray task set creator. So delete Ray cluster, set up Ray cluster, and submit Ray job. So we're gonna break those out into atomic units of work rather than just having it all be hidden away by the decorator. So here, just set up a basic DAG, and then we'll have our setup cluster task here. So you can see pulling out the specs and the folder and the 
path to scripts as well. And then here for the setup ray cluster, just using the connection ID, ray cluster YAML, and then update if it exists, if it already exists, just us pushing update to man, command to put in my latest specs into the ray cluster. And then here, submitting the ray job, here it's going to be looking for the Python script that's within my directory, um, and then injecting that to run within my ray cluster. Um, and then the Epicon task keys, this will push out to uh, set up ray cluster dashboard, uh, for any information that was exported from this task. And then we'll have another one, this delete cluster task here, just the delete ray cluster. And then we can just put it all together here under setup cluster and create ray job. So what we'll need to use here is the dot as setup method here, setup submit ray job, and then delete cluster as teardown, setup cluster, delete cluster, so just establishing that relationship there. And then we go into the UI to actually set up our connection. Just go to connection management UI, go to ray connection type, and then make sure you're just setting the uh, ray connection ID as ray con, since we set it in the scripts. And then what you'll need to do to add these is just the uh, ray dashboard URL. So the dashboard URL, ray.dashboard.com, so wherever you're hosting it. Um, and then any other metadata fields, headers here as well. Um, and really that's simple. Um, so super easy tool to set up and start using alongside Airflow to handle the heavy computation lift. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you check out this operator. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.